Hi guys, welcome to JExploit. My name is Jizen and in this video, we are going to discuss about the basics of HTTP. Let's begin. HTTP is one of the most used protocol to access the World Wide Web. Because of the invention of HTTP, we are now able to access any web application hosted on a remote location. So what is HTTP is all about? Let's figure it out. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is an application layer protocol. That means it falls under the layer 7 in OSI model. The first version of HTTP, that is HTTP version 1.1, .1, was first documented in the year 1997. HTTP uses port 80 for all its communication. And most importantly, HTTP forms the foundation of data communication for World Wide Web. Now, let's discuss some of the features of HTTP. HTTP is a client-server protocol. That means all the communication happens between an HTTP client and the server. The client can be anything. It can be a laptop, desktop, mobile phone. It can be any device. On the other end, there is a server in which the web applications are hosted. So, whenever an HTTP client wants to access a web application, it sends an HTTP request to the server. There are few fields in the header of the HTTP request that you should know. The first one is the HTTP method. It is basically the type of action which is requesting by the client to the server, which we will discuss in detail later. The next one is a path. Path is basically the web page that you are trying to access. If you take Facebook for example, the path can be your profile or the link to the message or to any other page. The next one is a protocol. In this case, the protocol is HTTP and its version is 1.1. So, the HTTP client sends a request to the server. The server processes it and sends back an HTTP response to the client. In the HTTP response, the server puts a status code, which is known as HTTP codes. It basically indicates the status of the request initiated by the client, which we will discuss in detail later. One another important thing that you should know is that all the responses and the requests sent in HTTP are in the form of plain text or clear text. This is a serious concern when a user inputs some of the confidential information into a web application, such as the user credentials or the credit card info, etc. If an attacker can perform a man-in-the-middle attack or eavesdrop the communication, it is easy for him to extract all this information just by analyzing the packets. In order to overcome this issue, we are using HTTPS, which is a secured version of HTTP. The next feature of HTTP is that it is connectionless. So, whenever an HTTP client wants to access any web application, it sends out an HTTP request to the server. The server processes it and responds back to the client. Once this process is completed, the connection gets terminated. Now, if the HTTP client wants to access the same web application, it should start the process from the scratch. That means, it has to again send an HTTP request, the server will process it and respond back. And again, the connection gets terminated. Because of this reason, HTTP is connectionless. The next part is HTTP is stateless. The reason is being the same. Once the process is completed or once the cycle is completed, it terminates the connection. It won't maintain that state or the session. Because of that reason, it is stateless protocol. One important advantage of HTTP is that it is media independent. That means an HTTP client can request for any sort of media to the server. It can be an audio file, video file, an executable or a compressed file. It can be anything. Because of this reason, HTTP is media independent. Next, we will look into the HTTP methods. So, as said before, whenever a client sends HTTP request to the server, it includes the type of action that it wants to perform. That is basically the HTTP methods. So, these are some of the common methods that are used in the HTTP request. The first one is get method. Get method is used whenever you want to access any web application. For instance, whenever you are trying to access facebook.com, your browser is sending a GET request to the server. 
So it is pretty much used whenever you want to access some information from the server. The second one is a POST method. POST method is used whenever a user submits some sort of data into the server. For instance, whenever a user submit the user credentials, the browser basically is initiating a POST request to the server. Or let's say whenever a user sign up into a web application, the browser is sending a POST request to the server. GET and POST are the methods that are commonly used by a normal user. The third one is HEAD. HEAD is pretty much the same as GET request, but the only difference is that whenever you use or a client use a HEAD request, the server is only going to respond back with the header. The next one is PUT method. This is basically used by the developers, especially when they have to modify some content in a web application. If they want to add some sort of resources into a web application, they can basically use a PUT request to upload those resources into a web application. The next one is the DELETE method. DELETE method is also pretty much used by the developers. This is used if the developers want to remove some sort of resources from the web server. The next one is the options method. The options method is used whenever a user or a client wants to know what are the available options that they can put into a HTTP request. So whenever an option method is used, the server is going to respond back with the available options. The most common available options for a normal user is the get and post method. The last one is the trace method. It is used for the diagnostic purposes. It is often used to find the presence of proxy in between the client and the server. So these are some of the methods that are used in the HTTP request. Okay, now let's look into the HTTP codes. HTTP codes are used by the server whenever it responds back to the client. These codes helps the client or the developers to understand the status of the request initiated by the client. So in the table, you can see some of the codes which are used by the server in the HTTP response. The first one in the list is 1xx or 100, 101, 102, so on and so forth. This basically indicates the informational events. The server used this particular code whenever it receives a partial request. For instance, a client wants to send a big file to the server. So at first, it is going to send a piece of that file to the server. Whenever the file received by the server, it's going to respond back with 1xx codes. It basically indicating to continue the process till the entire file is transferred to the server. So in this scenario, the server is going to use 1xx codes till it gets the complete file. The second one is the 2xx codes. 2xx codes basically starts from 200, 201, 202, so on and so forth. It basically indicates a successful request. For instance, whenever you are trying to access facebook.com, your browser is going to send an HTTP request to the server and the server will process that request and if it responds back with 200 code, that means the request is successful. Next one is the 3xx codes. 3xx basically indicates a redirection and it starts from 300, 301, 302, so on and so forth. For instance, you are trying to reach a web page, google.com, but the request got redirected to some other web page. In this scenario, the server is going to respond back with a 3xx indicating a redirection. The next one is 4xx codes. It basically starts from 400, 401, 402, so on and so forth. It indicates a request error. I believe most of you guys are familiar with the 404 code. It mostly happens when you're trying to access some web page and it is not reachable. So the 4xx codes basically indicates if there is any error in the request. The last one in the list is 5xx codes. It basically indicates a server error. The code starts from 500, 501, 502, so on and so forth. So whenever a server runs into an error, it basically responds back with the 5xx codes. So these are the codes which are used in the HTTP response. So these are the basics of HTTP and we have come to the end of the video. Before we wrap it up, 
Please take a minute to subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon to get the latest video updates. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.